All right. Well, I want to welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to our very first uh, Octant Town Hall. Um, we have uh, a lot of exciting things to discuss over the coming weeks. Um, so we're going to make it, I think, a, a weekly staple here to um, have these discussions in the open uh, around different challenges uh, that we are currently facing and um, want, want to talk through uh, what some of those challenges are and get your perspectives as, um, you know, different members in the space that are interacting both with us and then other ecosystems as well. Um, so that ultimately we can try to come to like a collective solution uh, with each other and, um, you know, at the end of the day, have the, have the best product um, that we possibly can um, with, with you all being uh co co stewarding that in a way um uh, mateus we have i think a few different things that we wanted to discuss i actually have another one as well so i, I know you were keeping an organization of of this um yeah. what what was the topic that you had on, on on your mind yeah so the main one that i shared uh also in the the octane discord recently is whether or not uh products that have consecutively gotten funding through octant through However many epochs, that's also part of the discussion, but whether or not they should start to get a cooldown um, for funding. And the purpose would be uh, a little bit to let new players in, uh, share yeah, some of the public goods funds, make it a little bit fairer. Um, so this isn't something that we've had before. We've had uh, cooldowns for products that haven't received enough interest consecutively, but not cooldowns for products that have received I mean, maybe too much interest i'm not sure but uh, <laughs> yeah so i think this is a good discussion to bring up um something of course if we have time for some other parts of the discussion we also want to discuss what counts as a public good and whether or not we should be funding uh products uh that have seed funding or vc funding perhaps token crowd sale funding. Um, and there was the other topic of project uh, rollover, whether or not this should even exist. If products are currently the top 50% of products that um, are allocated within for a round, they essentially roll over. As long as they fulfill their reporting requirements, they roll over to the next round, meaning that we only have 50% of the slots open um so that topic and the first topic they're a little bit connected uh yeah i i would say those are connected um uh one thing mateus since this room looks like it's going to maybe get a little more full uh we should go yeah video off just so we don't we don't box people out um great so yeah i would say the first point that you mentioned and the last point um are something that i have been thinking about a lot and it's Kind of in a way, uh, a, a very tricky situation. Just like you know, designing just governance in general is is very tricky. It's it's a it's a question of trade offs. Um, but before we dive into that, just uh, so everybody knows around the the context of these calls, this is an open format discussion. So I don't want this to feel like James and Mateus are just talking at a bunch of you. I want you all to feel that you have um, the opportunity to to chime in and um, share your thoughts, share your perspectives uh, as much as you want. So as long as we can keep the discussions uh, very civil, I would I would encourage you all to please um, share your thoughts here because uh, ultimately it's the, it's the feedback and the discussion uh, coming from you all that's really going to help us um, steer some of these uh, decisions that we ultimately need to make in, in the, uh, the best possible manner. So please feel free at any time to um, to discuss your your thoughts on on the topic. So as Mateus said before, topic number one, and maybe we'll add the uh, the last thing as like a caveat to that. Um, but topic number one: Should there be fun a funding cooldown for consecutively funded projects? Um, so maybe I can give a little more context to to that. Uh, projects that get funding in Octant. Um, we, we've had a hard time, uh, let's actually take a, an even bigger step back. Uh, bringing projects on board to Octant 
uh, right now does not have the best UX. We have a, a snapshot poll, currently have a live snapshot poll. Maybe Mateus, you want to drop the link in the chat there in case anybody here who hasn't voted yet um, cool. knows where they can go and vote for their projects. Um, but we have a, a snapshot poll prior to our round that uh, decides which projects to onboard. Now, um, this wasn't so much of a bad thing when Octant was first starting. Uh, because we, I don't think, really had much of a brand awareness yet. We were still uh, in the very infant stages of, of growth for Octant. And so uh, there weren't that many projects that knew about Octant. There weren't that many public goods that knew about Octant. So um, the snapshot polls weren't so much of a, a, of a bad thing to manage. Um, as Octant has grown over the last few rounds, we have each round from since Epoch 2, probably Epoch 1, um, seen exponential growth in terms of project applications and projects that meet the eligibility criteria. So we're having more and more and more projects coming in, seeking funding from Octin. Um, if you go to our snapshot poll now, you will see that there are 42 projects have uh, applied to be a part of um, the next round coming up in October. Some of those are projects from the previous round uh, that participated and they just were in the bottom half of how the round ultimately unfolded uh, with the top half automatically rolling over. But many of these projects are, are um, just applying for either the first time, some of them the second time. So we have a, we have a big group of projects that are vying to, to join us for, for Epoch 5 and we only have 30 spaces available. So the question then becomes, um, how, how do we make this fair from a point of projects that are participating semi-regularly with Octant and new projects? Because um, I can very much see, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from builders. I see a couple builders here and I might, I might call on you uh, to share your thoughts, but I can see how it must feel that you're on the outside looking in if you don't have a big community to go and mobilize um and uh with with those with those projects that do have big communities it kind of just feels like they're very entrenched in continuously receiving funding while many other great projects that are doing great things just don't have that ability especially because we have this automatic rollover good um taking place so uh I don't know if anybody wants to to chime in uh, and 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 share how they feel about this. Um, I'm happy to call and pick pick on a few people here. I think they might know who who they are, but yeah, I want to open the floor up uh, for anybody to to maybe share their their thoughts first before um, I start start picking on some people here. <clears throat> I mean, oh man, I pick on some people. Uh, there was Ludic who. Uh, did it comment if you have your uh, chat for the, the town hall open. If anyone doesn't have it open, you can see it on the top left. It's the little, uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, it's a little, the, the, little, the little conversation icon, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so he said, I believe this, is a, this has a good and a bad side. There are several products that people believe in and continue to support each epoch, but I understand that it can, can hinder new projects that are trying to receive support, but I don't think that there should be a funding cool down. So yeah, I appreciate you getting involved in the discussion. Uh, that's kind of why we want to have this call is to get various sides and people's opinions, uh, kind of start to build a community consensus around what people feel. Um, yeah, that's, that's I, I, I really appreciate that perspective. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we were thinking about um, maybe making this a little more fair. Um, one was doing themed rounds. Um, another one was doing, uh, if you participated in the previous round, not rolling over into the next round or not um, participating in the next round. So like a, a, in every other round kind of thing. Uh, or in every two rounds and then um, coming into a, a, a cool down for the third round or something like that. Um, 
seeing some comments on the side here. So I agree. I think that the same project, if, if there are winners, will always stand out over others. Uh, as a new project that wants to receive support, I agree. I think old projects should have a way to stay funded. Okay. So a lot of people are thinking that rolling over, I guess, is is a good thing. Is there anyone who who's feeling uh, the opposite? Maybe that, that funding rolling over maybe shouldn't be something that's uh, automatically taking place. Can I chime in? Oh, please. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle. I voted in a couple of epochs at this point. Um, I feel like there need to be boundaries. Because if we look at the top, like I've posted a screenshot here, the fact that we have projects getting so much funding round over round, and I've noticed a trend where newer projects are struggling to get funded. And it feels quite unfair from that perspective that even projects that I would love to vote, but it's not just dependent on my votes, right? Like how much matching then they get, like I am just one user. There's a lot more that goes into the decision making. And when we see those familiar names, we are tempted to double down and support them. But I don't know if there's some way here in the mechanism where there's one epoch off and then one epoch on where they they get cooled down for one epoch and then they can come back again. But until then, it feels like new projects will always be in the minority and will always be at a disadvantage. And the results from all the last epochs have sort of um, shown that. I don't know. Would, would, do other people have similar thoughts here? I think so. Ludic is saying, I completely understand what you mean and agree. If there was a way for the old ones to stay funded and the new ones also to receive. So, so that's just more money <laughs> coming in. Uh, if we can spread more money around to everybody, I think uh, that that would obviously be the, the ideal scenario. But um, I see Ben wants to chime in. Ben, yeah, you can 100% chime in. Maybe I'll just say one other thing as well is that um, we do see some situations where um, where projects that have been with us for a very long time um, have been able to mobilize their communities in a way that, uh, regardless of the impact that the projects are creating, they are going to continuously fund those projects round over round, uh, regardless of whatever the situation is. So. I think our motivation behind this is better trying to to better understand how we might be able to create a system in that is more fair to a wider surface area of projects um, to where these early adopters of Octant don't have so much of a, I don't want to call it a monopoly, but it, it kind of feels in a way that there is a, a monopoly to the, to the detriment of um, other builders in the space. So I, I'm thinking there's, there's got to be some kind of balance here. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, Ben. Hi. How you doing? Hey, everyone. Um, so just to Michelle's point about uh, there being this kind of uh, momentum that previous projects will have because people know who they are or they have some brand name recognition and new projects, whether they're smaller, uh, less well-known, um, first time in Octon, kind of whatever their context is. There is also stuff about information and the way information is presented from our side that I think we are working through to help improve the ability to quickly make informed decisions about new uh, new projects in the system. So um, as we look at the way reporting and the way information sharing is changing on Octant uh, in the coming months, one of the things that I am hopeful that we can kind of explore is ways in which new projects are maybe highlighted on the application or on the, the registry in ways that old projects are not, or maybe make it more dynamic. And if you have, um, if you have favorited a previous project, that project stays in your list for the next allocation, if they're in the, in the next round, but then you are getting some new projects with some new key information displayed front and center. Um, and I think that there are ways that we can work with uh, the community to understand what will get you all excited about new projects and what you want to see when you come to the application. So I love that. Um, the, only, the only concern I have is that regardless of how well we do in terms of informing, there are going to be some folks 
that are um, that are only interested in funding what they want to fund uh, from from their own communities or ecosystems. And so, uh, part of, part of the motivation again for for this whole conversation is is recognizing that that's already taking place, and us wanting to have more of a balance in terms of not allowing uh, maybe an outside community with capital to um, to leverage Octant in a way that is advantageous for them to the detriment of other projects um, building great things in the space. And so like what what is fair there without like overstepping ourselves too far? Um, yeah, does anyone else have any thoughts? I know Mike, you're you're in the crowd and you've participated in the round in Octant rounds a couple times. Uh, I'm, I can't remember, John, if you have been a part of the process before, but yeah, I would love to hear either of your opinions since you are both building public goods and uh, John, you, you've run grant rounds before, so I know you understand uh, how challenging some of this stuff can be. Yeah, I'm happy to to uh, hop in here and then I'll let Mike uh, jump in as well because I see he unmiked as well. Um, GM, GM, everybody, nice to be here. Um, yeah, John Ruth, I run the one of the leaders of the Climate Coordination Network. Uh, we were a previous uh, grantee, uh, or, or or tried to be, I guess. We, we got into the, a previous snapshot, didn't make it through. So I guess that does give me some, maybe an interesting perspective on that front. Um, but also have participated in, I think, the last, uh, I, I may have missed one of the snapshots, but had participated, I think, in voting in almost everyone. So, and, uh, and giving away some great money to public goods. But all that said on this topic, I... I like the idea of a cool down, but maybe it, it looks like, you know, you get a free pass one round and then the next round you, you do get a cool down and then the next round you can come back. That also is going to give these people some time to actually get out there and spend that money, make some impact, do some great, uh, you know, fund some great public good and then come back and tell us all about it. Uh, it feels like part of the sort of then re-entry process is, is really some kind of a, you know, report on everything that has been accomplished, especially for those that are big winners after a couple of rounds, they've received some pretty significant funds. And uh, I think it's all too easy for them to just keep slipping into rounds. Um, I do think it also helps to kind of level the playing field because I think that when we look at public goods as a, as a whole, while in theory, they should all be applicable to everybody. I think that the unique communities of each public good are smaller and larger depending what it is so if you look at something like tor which probably a lot of people use it's 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 like uh ingrained into so much of everyone's work that's like this public good that we all can get behind so something like that you you see them there you want to give them a little vote because you're like yeah tor that's good stuff um but you might have for example maybe a more climate focused public good well that that in theory has a lot of impact on all of us but may not have as much maybe direct impact every day. And so it may be more easy to uh, to skip over something like that, thinking, well, is this really what I want to fund with this money? I, it doesn't really impact me directly today, so to speak. So I think by cooling off some of the larger players at least every few rounds, uh, it then maybe gives a little room for some other folks to to slip in for a couple rounds and, and take advantage of the funding. So... Um, that's, I guess, some some of my thoughts on, on uh, all of that. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I, I really appreciate that that perspective. Yeah, I, I saw Mike from Abundance Protocol. Um, yeah, dude, I, I'd love to hear your perspective as well. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Yeah, I agree with um, kind of most of it or all of it. And um, just my thought on that, I think, well, obviously, you know, w you have limited resources. You know, you have 300 ETH that you're giving up to every epoch. And the question is, you know, if you could give out a billion ETH, then everyone will be happy. And then, like, you don't even have to vote. Just everyone gets everything. Um, but since you do have limited resources, like, how do you kind of distribute it in, you know, in a way that benefits the most and everyone is happy and, like, all the communities are happy? And just two thoughts about that. One is um maybe capping um like the top how much uh the top one uh projects uh can can get so i saw like maybe 20 ETH, maybe you know something around that area um another thought is maybe like um 
putting some friction into those who are the top um, earners in the sense that, you know, if you earn this much, yes, you can participate in the next round, but for example, you have to provide kind of better metrics of how you spend that money or something like that. Um, that's uh, one idea. Um, okay with like some kind of uh, cool down period um but i do prefer like some other way of doing it like if there's some kind of um some kind of friction put into just you know so the top projects can kind of present uh how they spend that money i think that would be uh better another thing is maybe introduce something like um like how much impact per like per um, per grant is um, made, for example, like there's no like very good ma metrics for it, but uh, you know everyone is kind of vying for the same share of the pie, and the question is like you know what can you provide with like you know with every additional dollar, and maybe like have just a vote on that, just like I guess like a more community based like not as part of the actual snapshot or part of the actual vote but um like the community actually thinking about um how this money is leveraged um and, and like what how projects actually benefit from it just for so they can think about it not this obviously you have like um different communities but you know just when i think about public goods like um, I always say it's, this is not just separate communities. Like we should all really think about it as we're all this one ecosystem and we are building toward this one thing, um, which is like, if we can, prov if we can create a mechanism that, that just, uh, funds public goods, that makes it sustainable, then, you know, we, we wouldn't have this issue. Um, so if we think about it as a community, that would help leverage it, if it makes any sense. I don't, I don't know if I was just rambling or uh, if I actually made any sense. Oh, no, it does. I, I think it's a it's an idealist sort of view um, where there are going to be folks that at the end of the day are coming from more of like a scarcity sort of perspective. No, definitely, and, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. we have, that, that's what I'm saying, like we have to kind of, you know, start thinking about it that way. And that kind of, you know, maybe helps people like, Obviously, if there is capture, like if there is kind of entrenched communities that are like, we just want the money <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but, you know, Octant in general, it would help kind of the spirit of, um, you know, the spirit culture of Octant if we think about it in the sense of how do we actually leverage like the most impact. Well, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Um... Yeah, in a lot of ways, I do, I do agree with you. I just, uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I'm concerned, at least in the short term, of um, of being able to identify, like, how to actually uh, move forward with that, knowing that there are going to be folks that, I guess, abuse it at the end of the day. Um, yeah, you brought some great points. Is, is there anybody else, I guess, uh, that, that yeah. might have a... Oh, hey, Regis, please. Yeah. Um, so I had I had mentioned a few things uh, up above there. I said, you know, um, if there was like a, a novelty value. So like, for example, Gravity DAO is almost entirely different um, from every other DAO in existence, right? And our, our value proposition is extremely different. So <clears throat> how does one... We're obviously a public good, but how does, how does one... Um, sort of account for novelty. So it seems to me that if, if you were to, this, the problem here is that we're in a little bit of a zero sum game. So how does one, how does one handle the fact that we have a kind of binary? So on the one hand, we might have a novelty um, <clears throat> thing that's not super financial focused right now, like us on the, on the one side of that, that linear polarity. And then the other, we might have like total, like almost like a regulatory capture, like when it was just an entrenched group. So maybe having metrics for both of those things and having that have some kind of weight within. So like, like obviously you would want to prevent capture, but at the same time you'd still want to some degree to 
<clears throat> reward really good valid projects that have proven themselves over time. So perhaps if there was some kind of uh, some kind of way of of sort of allowing for like a novelty or a, a perceived value kind of uh, metric on the one hand, and then kind of an avoidance of of capture kind of metric on the other hand. So maybe that's something you guys are already doing, but that was just the visual that popped into my head. I hope that made sense. Uh, it's it theoretically makes sense. I don't know how you implement that or like what, how, how that would function on on the execution level. Um, but yeah, I, I was know, just you're, you're a very smart guy, so <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually doing some research on this uh, a little bit while you guys were all talking, and it seemed like um, it seemed like you know during different financial crises, people you know were working with some of these things. Also, just looking at Ostrom's principles, um, it might it could be that there could be uh, some way to insert variables based on Ostrom's principles. Uh, so that's that I think solves some of these uh, problems like, you know, prisoner's dilemma and tragedy of the commons, right? <clears throat> so this is um, an interesting question and might be worth seeing if we could turn uh, Ostrom's principles into some kind of variable or governance structure, which is something that I'm super interested in as part of gravity. So just wanted to put that in there. More like yeah. a research project than, than an ex exact suggestion of this, but I'm really interested in new forms of, you know, what people call governance. I have a problem with the idea of governance, but um, because it, it sort of assumes a top-down kind of situation where I feel like Ostrom's principles are a lot more focused on how does how do we all participate in a system where not only do we have a say, but we also have boundaries. And so I think that you guys find yourself in the same kind of thing. And maybe by using Ostrom's principles as a guideline, you might be able to create some metrics behind that. So just FYI. I'm going to follow up with you uh, after the call here, and and we can chat about um, that a little more. Maybe I have some some research to to dig into there. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, how uh, how are others feeling about this? I would love to hear. Uh, oh, John, do you have something to say? Yeah, one other thing I wanted to add in that was coming to mind is I I will say it. it it's uh, it may be interesting to do a little more research on the last snapshot after you all implemented the quadratic voting versus um, versus the way it was previously. I, I do imagine that that starts to make it a little easier for communities to get those votes, though I, I wonder kind of how that panned out and and it may just take a few rounds to really see those results. But I also really appreciate how you and, and the Octant team are looking for ways to engage new communities in Octant and getting them some some GLM so that they have a little bit of voting power. And especially in the quadratic voting, then at that point, they have really, you know, as much vote as anybody else. So I think part of what, you know, the long game I'm seeing that you all are building is that through all of that, that, you know, maybe there needs to be a cool down, maybe there doesn't for these top projects, but also you're implementing new ways for new communities to have enough uh, voting power to bring the projects from their communities into uh, into the fold. So I uh, just wanted to kind of throw in those, those pieces of the puzzle that were kind of clicking for me as we're talking about all of this, that yes, I think the cool down is an interesting topic to, to think about, but I think also the the changes that you all have made are, are beginning to make it easier for smaller communities to, to have a voice. So appreciate that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it was something that we did at the very beginning of, of when Octant launched was uh, onboarding um, a, quite a few aligned communities, but then we got away from that a little bit. And so it's always been my uh, perspective that uh, in, in many ways we can start to solve some of these problems um, that we're talking about if there's a much more diverse uh, voting base or, or don uh, donor base in in Octant. So, um, yeah, that's that's been the motivation. Is just uh, you know finding a, a handful of aligned communities like we did in the beginning of of Octant and and working to working to bring them in so that they can express what they find to be valuable uh, amongst the projects that are participating. Um, 
But yeah, overall, how, how are we feeling? Did anything else come up for anybody here that maybe they want to share? Um, sounds like some people are uh, lukewarm to I warm on the an, Another <laughs> book that might be uh, helpful. Yeah, please. Um, there's this wonderful book by a guy named Alfie Cohn. Uh, he's, he's actually was name checked in uh, Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication book. And the book's called Punished by Rewards. <clears throat> now, this is a really interesting um, situation for examining the punishment that actually kind of lay within rewards. And so I think you guys are basically literally rewarding people all the time. So understanding this interesting dynamic um, about how rewards and punishments are basically like fundamentally not saying that you're doing this, but but. It, it, it's motivating people's behavior. So in some way, um, it's a, I think just really useful as a, as a background to understand the ways in which those things can come about. So, um, so <laughs> I would just recommend that basically you guys at Octant have a look at the book Punished by Rewards, because I think it might um, give you a really a clear view on what you're engaged in. So yeah, it kind of sounds like I mean I know you you have the the yogi background, so it kind of seems like uh you know attraction or repulsion kind of thing, and the the yeah like, yeah yeah I, getting away from yeah likes and dislikes kind of thing, and right. but at the same time, Ostrom's principles helps to kind of guide some of that a little bit too. So, but the Punished by Rewards book is is a pretty interesting um, and encyclopedic sort of takedown of of uh, the nature of this kind of these motivation systems. So it's a really interesting thing that I think would help you guys. Okay. Um, so what I'm gathering from all this and and what I think we want to start doing um, from, from these conversations is continuing them on the governance board. So um, what I'm going to do after this call is write up um, basically like a little uh, summary of, of what everybody had, had shared uh, thus far and um, us maybe in ways doing uh, like a multifaceted temperature check uh, to see, you know, what what people really think who, uh, about this con th about this topic uh, and allowing for others who weren't able to be on the call today to, to add their thoughts or opinions as well. But um, make uh, rest assured, I will post that uh, discussion uh, in the general chat here uh, once once I collect my thoughts and, and get it up live. But yeah, I would love for people here to uh, to continue that and and to share their thoughts on on the governance board as well, so that we can really try to summarize as best as we can, like what active community members here uh, ultimately feel with respect to this topic and other ones that we're going to be discussing as well. Um, so maybe that's a, a good uh, placeholder for for this specific topic. We have another twenty five minutes here, Mateus. I know there was a few others that you had written down as well um, that are that are worthy of discussion. What, what was on the agenda there? Yeah, so I guess the other one was essentially what counts as a public good and should we uh, see funded or should we give funding to projects in Octant that have already received seed funding, VC funding, uh, token funding, for example, like uh, Gollum Network did in November 2016, I think it was. No. You're saying Golem, Golem Network's a public good? Or it might be a public good? <laughs> no, I, I, no, I'm just... <laughs> that's. I mean, it's part of the discussion. What counts as a public good? And oh, how got it. be funding products that might have received funding through tokens? I mean, there is one particular product, uh, or maybe I, I shouldn't say their name specifically, but there is a, a product in the Snapshot book that has their own token, they got funding uh, through this token. Uh, but should such products be eligible for funding or products with VC funding or products with seed funding is the other topic. Um, I, yeah. I just want to go back to, so ju just to maybe point out something from the previous conversation. So I can't recall if it was MJ or Dogadas that mentioned this, but uh, you were pointing out that Perhaps it would be good to have some analysis on um, how the voting has gone since we implemented quadratic voting 
I guess we've also implemented uh, one person, one vote in uh, the snapshot. We have done a bit of analysis, but we haven't compared how uh, the outcome has been for like lesser funded projects, uh, which I think was a topic that you were bringing up. Um, yeah, I think it will be interesting to see. Primarily, we've been, or at least for myself, I've been looking at um, trying to find Sybils. But yeah, I think it will be interesting <laughs> also to do a do a comparison on actually how smaller communities compared when we have this implemented. And probably we haven't had enough time, like time past, time or epochs past, I should say, for this to occur, but maybe after Epoch 5, the snapshot vote, the allocation window, maybe it is a good time to do something like that. And it, it's probably important for this discussion as well for whether or not we should have some kind of funding cool down there because maybe the advantage that bigger communities have is dissipating uh, with some of the things that we've been doing in, across the last few months. So, yeah. But anyway, so the topic we're moving on to now is what counts as a public good and uh, whether or not projects with VC funding, token crowd sale funding, seed funding should uh, even be eligible within octants. Yeah, I know there's some opinions from the core team on this. Um, I guess I'll say that uh, sustainability is, is one of the big tenets of Octon and uh, project sustainability is is something that um, is something that we we really value and and want to drive forward. Um, there was a post, I, you know, I've shared it with many many friends already, in that uh, there was a post by by someone in the in the OP ecosystem who's been studying public goods uh, just as a OP badge holder, but also as a as a builder, and he he, in my opinion, really nailed nailed it uh in terms of uh the the challenge here and that uh true pure public goods um he said uh that they um they exist they are extremely important for solving market uh inefficiencies but they're very rare uh and that what he is seeing and what i would say i agree with him a lot on is that there are many projects in the space that rather than uh participating in the market or competing in the market just make their product free and open source uh so that they can uh, avoid the market um and that it's not solving market efficiencies uh or at the very least it's not solving market inefficiencies when there are competitors that are competing in the market and it's diverting funds to them and away from from true public goods uh that that could use that funding and so um that's my spicy take. I, I would I would wholeheartedly agree with that that uh, comment, um, but it's not something I think that that Octon in general is going to to draw the line on. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know what the solution is, but there's there's um, I think there's this is a conversation that many projects have been uh, avoiding um, under the guise of of credible neutrality because uh there's a lot of communities there that you know we were speaking about earlier that will just happily game the system uh to their to their benefit if they're allowed to so i think creating some kind of rule or standard or agreement amongst our community here would be really important so that we're confident in the projects that we're ultimately onboarding at the end of the day uh, and then one person here i won't call them out but they said you know we shouldn't make a rule that they can't participate but we can shame them <laughs> and i really like that idea <laughs> I'll, I'll own up um yeah <laughs> yeah, uh, that, yeah so i guess context there i uh for a significant portion of my professional career worked at a venture-backed organization that um was venture-backed because there was no other capital available and we were a humanitarian organization um and I don't think that there is a problem with venture cap 
venture-backed organizations getting public goods funding if the service that they are providing is a public good. Um, in our case, it was humanitarian data gathering and uh, project support, and we put more humanitarian data out into the world than we took in. Um, however, the reason why we were venture-backed is because we didn't have access to sustainable capital. Um, other than venture back capital, because grant funding is a nightmare, especially when you're getting it from different governments or Google or whoever. And I do kind of have this uh, thought that in a world where public goods funding is sustainable, is available, and is accessible, that maybe a lot of the organizations that pursue venture capital and have their motivations or their... Um, structure kind of irreversibly changed by that will not need to go down that route. Um, and if we build a system in which they don't have to do that, great. The other side of that is there are absolutely organizations who have applied to uh, for public goods funding rounds who the amount of money they will receive will not move the needle for them in any way, shape or form. They are effectively hijacking from the community. And if we want to allow them to be part of that, great. I do think they should be shamed. Yeah, I'm really but I'm also yeah, I'm really good yeah. at shaming, so I can I can help you do that. I guess I you know want to want to represent the, the the project well. <laughs> I do like the idea. I think there's there's got to be this social accountability layer to it, and in a lot of ways, that would probably be the most likely solution is having a community stand up to projects that are receiving massive VC funding, but are just here to see if they can get a little bit more um, to the detriment of other projects where that, that little bit can really go a long way uh, to producing some, some great outcomes. Also, beyond the social accountability layer, if you have venture capital backing, your reporting better be so much higher quality and better than anyone else going for funding from us because you have to do it anyways. Mm. And there's no there's no excuse to not provide high quality reporting if you are VC backed. Yeah, um, there's two thoughts there. One is, um, I guess you know we could start embedding questions into the application, uh, where we are directly asking, um. If you have received VC funding, there, you know, we, we can outline maybe, you know, what the criteria around all this is, but like, how will Octant funding move the needle for you? Uh, and like better understanding that and see if there's like actually some tangible answers there. Um, not sure if that's that's really a, a solid solution, not just something that came to mind. But the other one that I that I was thinking about was something that um, another person on this call uh, and I were discussing with a potential partner of ours, and um, maybe there's a way for any project that is either going to have some sort of revenue or uh, like a token launch or something like that, like 1% coming back to Octon. Maybe it's the Octon community, maybe it's through hypercerts, um, uh, where you know donors are are having some of that reward uh, coming back to them in like you know full feedback loop sort of manner. Uh, I don't know if they want to ch chime in on that, so or maybe Michelle, you you wanted to jump in there, but yeah, <laughs> I did. So this kind of goes back to a bigger overhaul of the eligibility criteria because part of the criteria to be able to participate in an epoch is that no like funding for token sales or anything of that sort so i guess this kind of leads to more intentional thinking through of both yeah we're definitely not going to solve i think some of these really big issues today um i, I think in a lot of ways this call was already really productive and in, in understanding from like a, a temperature check standpoint that we should continue to pursue um thinking deeply about um you know the the funding cool down and then uh, same same intention with this is is better understanding you know where where does the community sway in terms of um you know past funding from projects that are coming into octon so um yeah I, I guess i'd love to open up the floor to anybody else if they have any uh thoughts on 
previous funding uh, from projects, especially like massive funding from uh, projects, and then coming and applying to to Octant. Um, do you think they should be eligible? Should there be a different standard? Uh, maybe different, like Ben said, a, a stricter reporting process because VC backed projects have that reporting um, already done. Um, would love to hear if anybody else has has an opinion that they want to share about it. Yeah, I myself would just like to see, as you can see from my comments, some multivalent, more complex ways of regarding some of these things. So, um, for example, like if you look at it from a Kinefin standpoint, there are just different kinds of constraints, right? And some of those aspects of the Kinefin, you know, dark constraints or different kinds of constraints, you guys might not want to be enabling. On the other hand, you might want to be enabling or you know, restricting in some other way. And so having a sense within Octant of which one of those things you guys are trying to do and using the appropriate sense-making frameworks to make sense of that, I think would, you know, would help, uh, you know, guide some of that to some degree too. So these are all conversations we can have. I'll try to show up at some of the governance stuff and see if I can get into that, but that's just my uh, two cents. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't. I, I I lost my mute button there for a second. I didn't realize I had to wiggle my mouse around the bottom of the the screen there. Um, thank you, Regis or Durgadas. Sorry, I don't know if I should be calling you by your by your real name, but um, yeah, I do appreciate that that sentiment. Um, if uh, may, maybe that's a good segue to just sharing really quickly. If anybody has um, challenges that they are seeing, maybe as a project representative. Uh, or maybe there was something around the the process of voting, or um, you know, you, you you feel that there's uh, maybe a, a way to improve uh, any aspect that that you're engaging with uh, within Octin. Then our governance board and our Discord, for that matter, are um, places that we are paying very close attention to to any thoughts that anybody here has. So um, just know that 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 we're listening very closely, and um, I'm also going to do uh, my part here and really. Driving conversations both in a in a virtually live fashion on these regular town halls, but we're also going to be looking to drive a lot more conversation on the governance board. So, um, please make your thoughts known in in either situation or either uh, event because um, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Um, yeah, if there's anybody else who maybe wants to share their perspective on the on the VC or like token launched based projects. I'd love to hear what those opinions are. Otherwise, maybe this is a good um, uh, place to to uh, put a placeholder, and then we can we can pick up the conversation next next Thursday on the on the next town hall. But yeah, I just want to open it up. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I just got a quick thought on that. I'm thinking like if a project has kind of money coming in, not just funded, but like if it's generating uh, income, maybe um, like have a different avenue for that as opposed to like the public goods and then potentially maybe like, you know, create like a VC fund or something like that, that would maybe direct some of the money toward public goods also. Because um, I think it should not be kind of in the same category. Yeah, we're... Um, th there's some things that we're thinking about in the background that that absolutely is the idea. Um, so I, I, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that because uh, it, that the idea is already on our mind and uh, I'm glad to know that others are, are, are thinking this way. So thank you, Mike. I really appreciate that. Oh, I saw someone's mic wiggle. Anybody else want to share? That was, that was me. <laughs> Oh, that was you. <laughs> I was like, I thought I saw somebody unmute uh, themselves very quickly. But OK, cool. Um, yeah. OK, so if anybody else doesn't have anything to, to share, I'm happy to, to call this a, a very uh, wonderful first Octant Town Hall. You can expect this conversation taking place weekly uh, Thursdays at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific, 5 p.m. Central Eastern uh, Standard Time. Um, and then, yeah, we'll continue the, the conversations as well, asynchronous on our governance board. And Mateus in the uh, chat um, posted a link to the, the gov board there and where you can see different discussions going on. So um, 
Yeah, thank you everybody again for for attending this. This has been wonderful. I really appreciate all the different perspectives. This is exactly what we were hoping to get out of this first call uh, and also future calls. So thank you so much for attending. Uh, one more time, just a reminder, if you haven't voted yet on the snapshot poll, uh, Mateus also linked that. There are a bunch of projects that are vying for your support to join us in Epoch 5. So please, uh, if you have tokens locked into Octant, uh, prior to last Friday, then uh, make sure that you get to that snapshot poll and let your voice be heard so that um, uh, those projects ultimately are onboarded and we have a successful next round. But uh, as a rep for the Octin team, the Octin core team, we want to thank you all for, for joining. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And then we will see you either at the next block party on Tuesday. Uh, I got some more trivia lined up for everybody there. And then uh, Thursday for the, the next town hall. We'll see you then. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Thank you.